Good morning. How are you today? Sorry. How are you today? I'm good. How are good. you? I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> what Do you, are you doing? Oh, I'm interviewing folks for four minutes. I'm, oh. I'm doing some... I'm not with the trail, but I have a, I have a hobby. And I'm practicing this thing called street epistemology. Have you heard of it yet? No, I haven't. It's a way of exploring something that a person thinks is true by asking questions. Skip to the five minute mark if you want to get right to the discussion. Some people think that karma is real or that they've seen a ghost. Or if I bury the statue in my backyard, it's definitely gonna help me sell my house faster. <laughs> have you heard of stuff like that? Yes. You have? <laughs> or like a, there's a cardinal maybe chirping and some people think, or if they see a cardinal. A cardinal that it's supposed to, mm -hmm. what is it? A loved one is visiting you or something Precisely. like that. Precisely. I've had tons of conversations right here with people where we pick a topic and I may or may not agree with the topic, but I try to be really neutral on it. And I can even disclose where I stand on the claim if you want. Yet what I do is ask questions to explore what you think is true. Like okay. really understand what you mean by this word, for example, <laughs> and then why you think it's true. Okay. And then how you determine that those reasons warrant a high degree of confidence that what you think is true is really true. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, a lot going on there. I, there's quite a lot there. I try to jam it in, into four or five minutes. Oh, okay. If you want to... Oh. Can, hmm? we, we can, can we do it right here in the shade? Oh, sure. Okay. I mean... Do you want to sit? Are you tired of walking? Oh, I'm a little tired. Take a chair. I brought these chairs just for this. Oh, okay. Do you want some water? Thank you. Oh, no, I'm fine. What's your name? I've got mine. I'm AJ. I'm Anthony. Anthony, it's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, too. So what exactly are you doing with this um, stuff? Mm -hmm. Is it a... Valid question. I have a YouTube channel where I upload some of the more interesting chats. Mm -mm. And uh, sometimes I even rip it uh, and release it as audio, like on a podcast where people can just listen to it. People, it seems, are really interested in, in watching people or listening to people have a respectful dialogue on a sensitive topic mm -hmm. where it doesn't get heated and it's productive. We can actually peel back the layers on this thing and figure out how you concluded <laughs> that it's really true. Okay. Are you okay if I record it? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, it's a topic. <laughs> the topic is whatever topic you pick, but I'd like to encourage you to pick something that you really think is true. I would like to take a second camera and stick it up there to have it come down on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think I might even take you up on the chair thing and I like join you. I think I'm going to join you. Yeah, it's kind of on the chair. Kinda tired. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've got some beautiful, beautiful pictures, but you got some pictures on the trail. Yeah. Nice. They're good. good well, that's good. Pictures. Were you taking pictures of anything specifically? No, but I just took a harder trail, so I kind of took a few pictures of where I'd been. Oh yeah. Each time I try to go out and try to find a new trail, go out a little bit further, get a little more confidence. Yeah. yeah. I know. Sounds silly, huh? <laughs> No, not at all. I think that's probably one of the wiser ways to go about it. <laughs> Especially if you're new to hiking, too, I would think. Like, yes. Are you new to do hiking? A, do a little bit at a time, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just checking all of my equipment to make sure we got it all here. Because I don't want to hold you up for too long. And I think this is the first time I've actually done, like, a sit-down. Oh, okay. Is that true or not? I think maybe I've done <laughs> a few in the past, but it's been years since I've actually done a sit-down. Is there a particular topic in mind that you think that we can kind of explore and... Give me a few. Um, Ideally, it's something that it's you think it's so true to the point where it changes your behavior. So, for example, you might think that a God exists and therefore you donate to a church or you go to a service or you think that karma is real. So you were thinking about maybe playing a prank on somebody, but you decide not to because you're worried <laughs> that you might get some sort of payback because of that or anything else in between, maybe even like a political stance. I'm gonna vote for this candidate because I like his stance on this topic or something. I don't touch political stuff, thank you. You don't wanna to touch political stuff? <laughs> I've really been trying to get people to talk about politics, they just don't wanna go there. They'd, they'd rather talk about supernatural stuff like they think a ghost is real or mm -hmm. aliens exist or if I light sage in my house, it's gonna ward off evil spirits or if I arrange my <laughs> furniture in a specific way, it will profoundly affect my life in a positive way. Something like that. Okay. Well, um, I guess I can talk about the ghost thing. Mm. I'm a widow. Sorry to hear that. I'm okay. I'm good. Um, what do you mean by a ghost exactly? Um, a spirit. Somebody that has passed. Uh-huh. 
and um, I definitely think they're real. Ghosts are real in your view. Yes. It's a human who's passed? A human who's passed. Okay. Um, and yes, I think it's real. My, uh, my daughter, she told me that I, I used to have a glass of wine every time I put the baby to bed. I'd have a glass of wine and look at my picture of my husband, and I used to have conversations with him. Mm. And I'd always tell him, you know, I still love you. Mm. The next morning, my daughter woke up. She still hadn't... Um, She woke up and she, she was sleeping so she wouldn't have understood what um, the conversations I have. She was asleep. How old um, is she at the time? Uh, she's probably about three or four. Okay. Able to talk, able to tell me. Mm. And she goes, uh, she was in my bedroom, she points in a corner and she tells me, um, Daddy still loves you. Hmm. And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, Daddy still loves you. And she pointed to the corner and told me that he's there. And I was like, what does he look like? Um, she was only 10 months old when he died. So oh, she wow. only saw pictures. Yeah. So she said, it's the man in the picture. And I was like, really? And she told me, but he has a boo-boo on the side. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, he's got a boo-boo on the side. She picked the right side to know that um, he had, when he went in the hospital and passed, um, he had a drain on the side. Mm. In your view, she, she was correctly identifying your husband as this entity, this spirit that was in the corner. I know, it sounds so weird, but mm. true. Was this incident alone enough to convince you that ghosts are real? Yeah, I mean, yeah. telling me that you still love me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. I don't think that's a normal thing a kid's going to tell you. Mm. Hey, daddy still loves you. I'm sorry about the loss of your husband. Thank you. Was it recent? No, it's been, it's been five years. Okay. How certain are you that ghosts are real? Zero to 100. Can you quantify it in some way? Like 100% is there's no question in my mind. Ghosts are real. There's, there's no, no doubt times I should have fallen I didn't I feel like he kept me from falling sometimes mm. trails I almost fall and I'm like <laughs> and mm. I don't fall I'm like maybe it's God maybe it's angel maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's him still watching after me there's actually been times here on the trail where you've been running or, or walking and then you take a tumble and then you I don't fall you don't fall <laughs> and then in your view that's uh, that's something helping you preventing you from falling yeah Okay. Yeah. I know it sounds silly, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I'm like, nope, this is real. Why do you think it sounds silly? Um, a lot of people don't put a lot of stock in it. They think, oh, she's just, she misses her husband too much or mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take one example at a time. Are you telling me that you're incapable of actually falling? That it's impossible for you to fall at this point? No, I think I'll fall. Okay, so there's there are times where you can be walking on the trail and take a tumble and really fall, skin mm -hmm. your knee or whatever. If I, if I really mm -hmm. run through them, but mm -hmm. if I'm just kind of, and I almost slipped, mm -hmm. I didn't fall. If the next time you come out on the trail, <laughs> <laughs> you're walking and you actually are just strolling along, you know, you're not running or anything crazy, <laughs> you take a tumble, and you fall, would that be a validation that ghosts aren't real to you? Would no. that be a way of disproving the hypothesis that there's entities helping you? I don't think so. Okay. Sometimes you have to fall because you got to get back up. Mm. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you were, to, and I don't really want you to fall, <laughs> but if you <laughs> okay. were out here walking and you did take a tumble, it wouldn't lower your confidence at all that entities exist. No. Okay. The one thing with my daughter, that, mm -hmm. that's the most important one. Sure, sure. So, okay. that's an easy 100%. She couldn't have been talking about anybody else. Mm -hmm. How could she know what I needed to hear? Okay. I want to ask you a question that I, th I think is going to help clarify okay. what this belief is based on. Mm -hmm. And maybe it won't. I don't know. I'm going to try. <laughs> but if this incident with your daughter didn't occur... If she just woke up and said, good morning, mommy, what's for breakfast? That type of thing. She didn't relay a story to you where she purported to see a man in the corner. 
with uh, some wound on his side. If that incident didn't happen, would you be 100% sure that ghosts are real, ghosts and spirits? I didn't believe before. <laughs> What's, you didn't I believe? I didn't believe, really. So this incident is foundational or, or fundamental to you thinking that ghosts are real? Yes. Okay. All it took was one time. Because, I mean, I had that conversation and there's she was asleep. There's no way she knew I needed to hear that. Mm. <laughs> Your daughter told you something that you needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And as little as she was, she said the right thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there a chance that the weight that you're putting on this one incident is higher than what you might normally put on the account of a three-year-old <laughs> <laughs> because she said something that you wanted to hear. Um, maybe, but I think, I think she should, uh, no ma'am. No, you just, you just mm. found this spot to park? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> right, what are you looking for? You want to? Uh, apparently they are. People I have been they saying. Are. Yes, I went through all the way four. I'm amazed. Yeah, me too. With all the rain we had yesterday. Yeah, they're wet. They're wet and slippery. Sometimes I think the staff doesn't come out here, and close trails that probably would normally be closed. Maybe just because they're. Hey, I'm happy. I'm getting to run my trail. So. I'm sure, gonna... you're not complaining. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> I, I, let me repeat what I asked because I think we got interrupted there, but. Your daughter reported an incident that um, brought you to a 100% certainty that ghosts are real. Mm -hmm. And then you disclosed that she said something that you needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And then my question to you was, are you giving a lot more weight to the claim that a three-year-old might make because she said something that you needed to hear? Well, it was something I needed to hear, but at the same time, she's so little. At the time, she was so little. Why would she say something like mm. that? You understand what I'm saying? There's not a... It was too specific or something? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very specific. Because I didn't always say, I still love you. I just would have these conversations mm. with him. And... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, when she said it back to me, it was like, it was almost like he was there. Mm -hmm. So it was nice. Mm -hmm. Last question. Okay. And then you can, <laughs> we can go on or you can ask me questions about what I'm doing. <laughs> or where I stand on the topic too. If you'd like to know where okay. I stand on the same scale, I can tell you. What I'm wondering is how far are you willing to go with what your daughter will tell you when she wakes up and says, I've seen something in the corner. Like if she says, mommy, mommy, that man wasn't in the corner this time, but it was a, it was a monster. Okay. Would you, would you, I'm trying to think of something that she could possibly say that wouldn't be something that you needed to hear. Okay. You know what I mean? Would you still respond? Would you jump up to hundred percent confidence if she gave you an account of something that you would probably say, well, that's just not possible to happen. Um. I don't know. I mean, kids are, I mean, if they're telling you something, I'm usually with my daughter, I'll believe her. Mm. If she sees something, then there's something there. Mm. I may not be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, I think once we get older, we stop, we stop believing in a lot of things. You'd be willing to take your daughter's word for it, even if she said something that it wasn't something that you needed to hear. Yes. Okay. Because she, if she's little, why would she tell me some story? There's no reason to tell me a story. If we were to take this just a little bit of a step further, I'm trying to test your <laughs> boundaries to see how far you're willing to go with this. Oh, I'm willing to go. Okay. So if she said, Mom, this monster, yeah, yeah, not only was in my corner, but is it, was, it was explaining how we need to sell our house and give everything that we, you know, donate everything that we have to... I don't know, Habitat for Humanity or something. <laughs> Would you start making phone calls the next day to make that happen? Would you be 100% sure? Would you would go with it? not be 100% sure because I believe mm. in God. There are, um, there could be evil or good. Mm. You know, this could be an evil person or a good person. 
and leading you down the wrong path. You wouldn't question that she had the experience and that there was an entity telling her to tell you to do these things. Yes. You would uh, question, you would consider the motivations behind it. Yes. Huh. Is there anything that your daughter could say that you wouldn't believe? Um, no, usually kids are too, kids aren't taught to, they're taught to lie. They're not just instinctively, mm. you know, if they see a ball, they're gonna say ball, <laughs> you know? Mm. They're not, uh, I don't think they have that uh, capability to lie right off the bat, especially when they're that little. Okay. Hmm. So that's more the reasoning. <laughs> okay. If I understand what you're saying, your daughter could report any situation of something that she saw and you would believe it, mm -hmm. take action on it perhaps, or at least weigh the actions that mm -hmm. you should take. Yes. And then it would move you to 100% certainty that it's true. Yes. That there's an entity that was there. There's there was something there that, you know, mm -hmm. we need to start praying. We need to start worrying about... And I'd worry about whether what they were telling her. She'd probably come to my room and I'd be praying more. Hmm. Okay. God's real. God's real. <laughs> okay. Well, that was our... That was four minutes talking about ghosts, or a little bit That's more than four minutes. A hmm? A lot of different stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you... Let me ask you this. I probably should have asked this at the start. Okay. Do you attribute all this stuff and believe that ghosts are real because you have the God belief as a core? So in other words, mm -hmm. if you were an atheist and you didn't believe in any gods and then your daughter reported this incident, would you be 100% sure that ghosts were real? I couldn't imagine myself as an atheist. I mean, <laughs> get around you. <laughs> Let's let our imagination think about it for the second. Let, let's say that you didn't believe in any gods. Would you be, is the God belief allowing you to accept the claim of a three-year-old and believe with 100% that ghosts are real? Or would you still be 100% sure that ghosts are real if you experienced that and neither of you believed in any gods? Uh, I think it's possible. I think uh, people definitely still believe in spirits and stuff. That don't believe in any gods. That don't believe yeah, in God. I've had a few. So I yeah. mean, something weird will happen, and mm -hmm. they'll be like, "Oh, that's real." <laughs> and yet, for you, if you let's say you didn't believe in any gods, and then your daughter reported this this experience, would you jump to one hundred percent confidence that ghosts were real? Uh, probably not. Hmm. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Probably not. I. I mean, I. God always says there's a second, uh, or the Bible says that there's a um, new life after this. Mm. I honestly believe my husband checks in on us and makes sure that we're okay. Do you hold those views because you have a core belief that a God is real? I think so. Yeah, okay. I really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well that was great. <laughs> do you come to the trail frequently? Because it would be really neat to have a second conversation at some point. <laughs> really? Yep. Okay. <laughs> it was and nice meeting you. Yeah, very nice to meet you too. <laughs> that was fun. Let me give you a card before we go. Okay. I'll check out your, uh, your webs website. Yeah, check out my... Or... If you, That's for emailing me. Oh, okay. And then I want to give you this magnet here. Oh, okay. That'd be fantastic. If, uh, yeah, maybe you can look into... If you, if you go to YouTube and you search for street epistemology and then my first name is Anthony... Okay. And you'll see examples right here on the trail or at some of the universities in town where I've been going to. Oh, I bet those are interesting. <laughs> yeah, re honestly, regardless of where I'm at, I usually find people that want to talk about this stuff. Okay. And there's no pressure at all, but okay. I would love to have like a, a follow-up conversation with you at some point. Okay. That'd be fun. Right. Okay, thanks, Thank AJ. You. Yeah, bye now. AJ is walking away right now. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting talk. She was talking, she was talking a little low, but I'm sure my camera here on my chest picked it up. In the end, and, and I, I wish I kind of went this direction at the start, but sometimes you have to go down a couple of 
chase a couple of false leads, I suppose, to to find your way back to maybe where you started and then you can find a better direction. But at, at the heart of it, it seemed like she's willing to jump to 100% confidence that ghosts and spirits are real because she has a foundational God belief. Now, if I had known that at the start, what do you think I would have pursued? I would have pursued her God belief. But we, we talked about her God belief, talked about spirits, and I didn't discount. I'm getting some noise in the background, so if you guys can mute, that'd be great just for now. I'm doing a recap. Um, if you notice, I didn't discount, or at least I tried not to discount the experience that she had and that she says her daughter had. I tried not to just dismiss that outright. But at the same time, I wanted to push back a little bit to see how far she was willing to go and what she would accept that her daughter said. And surprisingly, she said that my daughter can basically say anything at that age because kids just don't lie when they're at that, at that age. They're just so innocent, I think what, is what she was saying, that I'd be willing to accept anything. And I tried to come up with just some crazy example and she just rolled with it, which led me to ask her, is there anything that your daughter could say that you wouldn't accept? And she said, no. Like, oh my gosh, wow. Now, at the very least, it confirmed to me that that was a monumental experience in her being 100% sure that ghosts and entities and spirits are real. However, she's willing to just accept anything her daughter says about spirits because she has this underlying belief. So in a way, this would be a great thing to set on the shelf for the time being, have a secondary conversation with her about why she thinks her God is real and how she concluded that that's the case. And then when it possibly becomes apparent that she really can't be too sure about the God, I think we'd circle back to the ghost thing. So in a way, this was kind of an example of going down a path that was maybe a little bit of a false lead, but it wasn't completely worthless. We can set that aside, come back and visit it later. There was also one point in the conversation where she said, I needed to hear it. Uh, that didn't go unnoticed by me. I jotted it down on my board and we ended up talking about it. Somebody came by and interrupted us and I circled back because I wanted to touch on that. When somebody says, my daughter said something that I needed to hear, that's a red flag for me. That's, that's very similar to, I want to believe that it's true. And even though there are other reasons for her believing that ghosts and spirits exist, I definitely think it's given her something to think about. And if we do meet again, I would like to explore her confidence that a God exists because it seems like there are other beliefs that are based on that one. In the end, I thought this was a great talk. It was my first time sitting down. She wanted to sit down in a chair probably because she was tired from her walk. So I sat down across from her. Hopefully that turned out okay. Uh, I feel like I, I might lose a little bit of the body language when we do that, but I'm willing to, to go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, it might make her feel more comfortable, might even make her want to stay longer, who knows. There's a, there's a real huge potential to help her really think about this belief and maybe back off of her certainty on something that's probably not true. And think about what she might be telling her daughter. It might be one of those stories that AJ will often tell her daughter that she had this experience and drive that home and drive in this idea that ghosts are real. She could be passing this belief along to her daughter and maybe other siblings in the family if they have them. Uh, a conversation like this, if, if, if I were to meet with her again a couple of times, could really have profound effects in, in a positive way, I think, for not only AJ herself, but maybe her children.